Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Stony with Dice Trickle podcast. Um, the third in a mini series of Kutzer specials is uh, Kyle Kutzer, MDE, joins Gordon Gowdy and myself. Um, in case anyone's not aware, these two, I mean, arguably two of the best talents to come out of Stony Wood, and obviously they've gone on to bigger and better things after Stony Wood, but Stony Wood played a big part in their upbringing and make them into the, the crickers they are. Um, so I would like to say I've left the best Kutzer to last, but he's in some story, I think that's probably Pete. So uh, <laughs> still, still need to get him on. Maybe yeah, Megan yeah. as well. It, it, um, get, get them on, they've got nothing else to do at the moment. I was starting to get a <laughs> special, but we'll see. Um, anyway, how, how have you guys been coping in lockdown? And what have you been up to? Uh, I, all, all good. Uh, to be honest, um, we were just saying before you, you started recording there, but yeah, I've been doing a fair few of these, um, a couple a week, to be honest, uh, in, in different formats and, and whatnot, but uh, good, time, good to spend some time at home with the family. Uh, yeah. they're probably, they've probably had enough of me now. I think they, they're, uh, they're bored of me taking them for, for Carl's PE in the back garden, so they've had enough of that. Um, and now they're they're just heavily getting stuck into their TV and their Play-Doh uh, expeditions and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But that's fine. All good. Otherwise, cheers. Good. Yeah, it's been obviously pretty quiet. Not much uh, happening at all, really. Um, managing to keep fit, getting out of the bike and out running. But other than that, as I say, not much. Lots of Netflix and watching lots of these podcasts. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, Keeping fit for that six over spells you will now is good. Yeah, I can maybe do six in a row now, but <laughs> anyway, so, so uh, today we'll just um we'll split it in two parts almost. We'll start with a Stony with Dice, you know, part uh, where these guys obviously talk us through how they get into cricket and then moved along with Stony Wood. And then after a uh, wee Stony Wood QA, we'll go on to what these guys did after, obviously a lot. <laughs> I would look through the archives and um, these guys have played a lot of cricket and for a lot of different teams in a lot of different parts of the world. So hopefully it's interesting and you learn a bit about these guys. So first of all, really, how did you get into cricket? Both of you, I mean, Kyle, will start with you. It's hard not to probably get into cricket. Uh, yeah, uh, two, two older brothers and used to follow the old man around a bit. So you've probably heard similar from, from the other two. So I probably won't bore you, but what what would be interesting is to get big big pistol Pete on here at some point. He's on the and, uh, list. He is far on the see, list. See what see what he's got to say. But we used to just follow 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 him around. To be honest, and mm-hmm. uh, there was always a big competition between between myself, Sean, and Stuart on the side of the field. Summer with a massive game of uh, Test match cricket or something on the on the boundary line, which probably ultimately ended up in a punch up somewhere some somewhere um, all over really the country. Happened. So, um, <laughs> but there we go. It's funny you should mention that, Kyle, because looking through, um, obviously we'll get on to it later about first memories of playing first team cricket at Stonywood. Um, I had to look through the archives because I'm terrible at remembering stuff, but to see when I started playing and stuff like that. But one of my first seasons in the first team, I was looking through and there was one game that sprung to mind. It was um, West Lothian away down in Linlithgow. 31st of August 2002. I remembered exactly. I've got it on my on my thing. <laughs> really? Well, do you remember for the same reason I remember it was you and your brother got into Barney and you took Sean by the throat and had him pinned up against the uh, clubhouse <laughs> wall. I, I do I do remember that, but I can't remember exactly what it was all about. But I, it was you certainly de- deserved it. That's all I'm going to say. But I can't um, but. That, that was, Gouds, if I'm correct, without um, stealing anything there, as far as I'm concerned, I went through a few of these, and that's the first one that your name came up in, so I'm, I'm wondering whether that was maybe your first, or if not, first game we played. I think it was. Looking at the stats then, I think it was, I played a game at the start of that year, and then towards the end of the year. Yeah, yeah so Gouds, how did you get to cricket then? Because uh, your family don't, didn't really play, did they? No, no one in the family's played cricket before I did. Um, it was in primary school, Knoxy, eh? Steve Knox, came into the primary schools around and did quick cricket sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, you know, I watched a bit of cricket on TV and I've got recollections of playing a bit of beach cricket when we were on holiday up in Banff. But other than that, I never played it seriously. And then it was an excuse to get out of class, I think, to go and try this cricket thing 
Um, so we just went along and from there really just enjoyed it and carried on going up to the club every Friday night with junior cricket yeah, sessions yeah. Um, from there and never looked back. Yeah, so then we'll get on to, I've actually got a picture here if I can share a screen for the junior stuff. Does getting all technical getting now. I haven't seen you do this in all the other podcasts. Big shout out to Andy Rayner for uh, oh. letting me know that this uh, this recorded if I share a screen. So, any memories of this trip? Was that where did we, we went to? Yes, we went to Noxy, wasn't it? Yeah, we went in the train down to Cumbria with Noxy. Oh is, is that Martin Reed with glasses on? That's what I'm trying to work out. Is it actually Martin Reed? Is it there? Um, to Ian Brand, it right? Might have been. Well, Ian Rand left, whatever. Yeah. Check that yeah, out. Yeah, it is him. Well, that, that's, uh, that's not a bad team, though, is it? When you look at... <laughs> has, any, has any of them gone on apart from you two and Ian, Ian Brand and Marty Um. Mm, well, Noxie. Noxie played for Scotland. Noxie, yeah. <laughs> the coach. Sean, Sean in the back. <laughs> absolutely um, Grant, Grant Dugmore at the back went and played for Argentina. <laughs> yeah, he was a good player apart, wasn't he? Um, he was a gun. David Urquhart left on the left. See my mum in the background there. Yeah, she'll hate, there is. She'll, she'll hate me for saying this, but she's taken my bag away. I think because she gave me too much spending money. <laughs> um, so she she took my bag away and was hauling cash out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> now that was a good that was a good tour actually. What I remember from that is a whole heap of rain in one day, a, a massive storm. And and actually, I think I got my first ever fifty on that tour. I think. I don't remember any of the cricket we played. I just remember. Have you got any memories of junior cricket there in Stonywood? Um, like just. I remember Gaudi being a better off spinner than a seamer, actually. A leggy. Someone said a leggy. I think in a podcast. Nah, it was off spin. It was off spin. Definitely off spin. Yeah, no, nah, bowled off spin for a bit, and then got fed up getting whacked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the, not the best ground people's park for sure. <laughs> Just give it some air, Gaud. <laughs> yeah, and no, I don't know what possessed me to try and bowl off spin, but um, I was actually all right at it for a bit. But then, as I say, I just got fed up, I think, getting whacked everywhere and decided to try and start hitting people in the head. So, um, who would you say you learned most from at Stonywood in the, in the younger years? Say that again. Who did you learn the most from? Like the... um, oh, there's, there's a whole heap of people. Like, I think going back, uh, I mean, I haven't been massively involved in the club over the last you know, little while, obviously, but you know, I do try and make my appearances up there whenever possible. But we've had a whole host of really good coaches and, and volunteers who've come through the years. So I remember Grant Dugmer, when he first came over, he, was, he, he, he worked really religiously with myself and my brothers and the Seligmans and, and a few others. And obviously Noxy was the first one sort of in there who sort of got things going initially, I think. So there's been some, you know, you could list off, reel off a whole host of names there to be yeah. honest. Um, uh, Paddy Maroney as well. Paddy, Paddy hinted at it. I think he wanted to say it, but he hinted at it about um, playing on the leg side. And he never <laughs> went to any detail, but there's something there that he's taught me that I that I always do. So maybe we we chat about that further down the line, maybe. But uh, I thought Paddy, Paddy was just sort of dangling the carrot there. Yeah, he, he, he was what he was wanting to and someone said about it. Who did you say taught you the most? Did you learn the most? Yeah, from? I think again, very similar. Noxy and Grant, obviously, they got me started in um, playing cricket, so they sort of taught me the basics. And then again, like Kyle. Um, Paddy would spend hours and hours with us in the nets doing one to ones. Mm -hmm. First time I think I, but well, I don't know, it was the first time I'd ever been videoed like batting, and then you'd go back and watch the videos over. And um, yeah, yeah we spent hours doing that with Paddy, so he was a huge, a huge help um, for me as well. Yeah, that 2001 season was kind of the season that you uh, came away from it, kind of, wasn't it? Looking at the the stats, but um, so once again, I'm going on the screen here. Honestly, this technology is well. So first team debut. Do you remember it, Kyle? Ninety nine against Air. Yeah, I've got it. I've actually got it on on my screen in the background, just in case I needed some. See, you're you're, you're even better at reading these. Um, you glued up on them. 
Pattern at number 11, what is that all about? Any remember any memories from this thing? It must have, I, I don't actually, I don't remember any of it. Um, it must have, a shirt filler, as you do, you know, a team player, you go and help out, but I, I was... How old were you there, Kyle? What year is it? 99. 99. Uh, how long? That's... 15? 15, 15, 16, something like that. I don't, how old am I now? 30, 35. Just 35, I think. So old. Yeah. And uh, no, what I remember, well, a couple of things surprised me when I actually looked at this earlier today, thanks to you and when you sent through how we actually find the, this information. <laughs> I know, so I know plenty of people who know exactly where you find the stuff that they need. Um, but I was surprised to see that I actually played against Bruce Patterson, which yeah. was a shock to me. And there's people like Neil McHattie and there and Andy B. And I just don't, I just, I remember sitting at the sideline watching these guys and I never remembered actually playing with them. So that was, that yeah. was a bit of a shock. But. Yeah. Remember your debut games? 2002, I believe. Or any first memories of getting into the first team? Because you were, you, you must have, you must have got the off spin away quite quickly and become a pretty good seamer very quickly. Yeah, I, don't, I think I just bowled off him for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I think 2002. I only know this from looking back. I think it was was it Watsonians. It was my debut. Um, I think it was Kelburn. Yeah, it could be. I've got no idea. Kruger van Weyckland. Yeah, you played against Kelburn. Yeah. We won't talk too much about Kruger van Weyck. He's not uh, my club's favourite human being at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Didn't even... You only got a little boy. You got a work on debut. There we go. Um, yes, that's interesting too. Ian van Zale. Is that Ian van Zale or is that a different van Zale? Mornay on sale, I think, wasn't it? And Anyone it, remember John Rowe? Yeah, yeah. He, he, I just remember he played like three games and cleaned. The guy that, he was talking about. up. He was just ridiculous, apparently, yeah. Yeah, then, then, then he just decided he wasn't playing anymore. I don't know what happened, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, some, so any, any first memories of like the first year you guys played in the first team, um, just playing with obviously guys like David Lamb, pros, amateurs, must have learned a lot. Especially being young guys. Like, how's that a word? Um, yeah, well, obviously, I remember that first season I played with Kyle and his brother having Barneys every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, just one guy that I always sort of looked up to at the club was um, Berger. Um, I played a lot of cricket with him, um, club cricket, and just learned so much just from bowling with him. And I think we formed quite a good partnership um, throughout our time that we did play together. Low medium pacers are keeping up. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, Lamy was a different gravy with a bat. Mm. Yeah, we used to churn the runs out. Yeah. So, um, so would you say he's your story with this hero growing up? The guy you looked up to. Yeah, definitely. I would say Berger um, was probably my hero growing up. Um, just the amount of wickets he took and the quality of his, his bowling. Yeah. And he's um, a great lad as well. I've not spoke to him in years, but. Um, yeah, actually, um, David yeah. Lamb actually messaged me saying Berger wants to do a podcast with Gowdy. Like literally, <laughs> literally yesterday, and I went, too late. <laughs> <laughs> you said the link to him, you never know. He might just rock, he might just rock up. <laughs> might just rock up. Uh, anyway, so. Bit of a Stony Dice Q&A then. Um, one Stony Dice player that you didn't get to play with, but you would have liked to play with? There, I mean, I, it's hard because I sort of, I left the club and then I went I went down south and I always kept in touch, but I didn't really get a chance to sort of meet any of the people, um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe pop in for once or twice a, a season or something like that. But um the one one person who I did know and I did actually play with, but not for Stonywood, was a guy called Mario Olafier. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So he was over. He was over with Darren Nagel, and they both played at the same time. And whenever I came home, I didn't have a I didn't have a room to stay in because they were both they they <laughs> both stayed in the the Cooksers Hotel upstairs. So I had, I had nowhere to go. But Mario, I knowing Mario, I, I came through the 
the Western Province Academy with them and I knew no what it would have been like. And I just felt, I felt like I was missing out when he was up there because obviously, you know, you've obviously heard what character he was, but he's some boy, but. I heard a lot of stories with him that definitely should not be said in a public place. Um, <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it wasn't fan of the helicopter or anything. <laughs> Got um, dangerous as well. <laughs> guys, who do you want to play with? Um, see, I find this quite a tough question because I think I've been lucky enough to play with a lot of the guys that have been spoken about in all these podcasts that we've done because, you know, we started playing senior cricket at like 12, 13 years old. Yeah, so you've, you've pretty much, and you've been back obviously till like 2012, haven't you? So you've played a crowd. We played, like, started off in grade five at like Stuart Park with the likes of um, Bob Lamb Senior. He was playing back in those days, um, playing with Ian Lees, Alan Barron, you know, you've played with all the guys all the way through. Um, arguably, some of them weren't obviously in their prime and they were mm-hmm. a bit older there and just sort of playing to make sure and bring us youngsters on. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, I couldn't really name anyone who I've not played with that I would want to. I've been lucky to play with a lot of the Stonywood legends. The Stonywood legends, yeah. Um, one, one thing that you wish you knew as a 15-year-old cricketer? That's a tough question. Come on, Kyle. Cricket Scotland captain must have some inspiration for the juniors. Uh, uh, me as a 15-year-old, I literally couldn't get the ball for square. I'm pretty sure Mike, Mike Lowe mentioned that about 20 times. Or David Lamb mentioned that about 20 times. And it was true. <laughs> like, I couldn't get the ball for square. And, and maybe just understanding that and realising the frustration that you know, eventually I'll, I'll have my time, you know, it'll it'll start coming my way and I'll be able to maybe pierce the gap, you know, rather than just knock it straight to them. But I had a, I had a knack of just hitting the ball at field just pretty much my whole career, to be at honest. Least they, at least they complimented you. I think your brother just went, he was, he was pretty bang average, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, um, as a 15-year-old, you were playing for Scotland, so maybe that's not a good question. Almost. Um, well, yeah, it's 16 and I started playing with Scotland, but I don't know, it's a tough question. Yeah. Become a batter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any any favourite overseas at Stonewood? Um, we've had a we've had a whole load of good overseas. Oh, where do you start? Um, yeah, where do you start? Oh, I guess... Um, Grant Dugmer's probably got to be probably well. He lived with us as well, so that was that was helpful. But um, obviously, being my uncle as well, that that might help. But he was a he was a pretty amazing player. And then um, and Paddy, those two, I probably had most had most influence from them too, uh, from a coaching side of side uh, point of view. So I probably I'll probably say them. But we had some some belting overseas, you know, I'm just looking at some of the team sheets that I pulled up here and they've got, they've got people like Jean Lemaitre and, and Casper and, um, a whole Ar- Arno Jacobs, Arno too. Jacobs, what player. Um, yeah, like we, had, we had loads of good ones. We were lucky actually with the, the recruiting system we had at, at the club. I think it was good as well. Like a lot of them, there was a good balance between having gun players and also coaching, which I think was a massive thing for the club. And the reason that there's so many good young players came out of Stonywood um, in our time as, as playing. Yeah, I, th- I think so- Stonywood kind of set the trend, possibly in, in Scotland, for that type of overseas, you know, get someone in who's coming over as a coach that can play. I mean, I'm sure other clubs did it, you know, without knowing a heap of detail. But yeah. I think Stonywood yeah. start setting the trend with that. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, David Lamb touched on as well, isn't it? Instead of getting a higher player get someone who's actually going to improve and I mean as I saw uh, showed that um, team I mean there's five six ace players to come out of your your era mm-hmm. so um what about favorite opposition in Scotland favorite favorite opposition so when you look at the team sheet and go I'd like to play no, you're not allowed to say Stony Wood. I was just going to say that because I say Stonywood. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
And just, just, just some the, that's some people, grocery side did not get up. Okay. Just for the people watching, when we turned turned this on, Gals had the the stag shirt hanging <laughs> in the background up there. Gives me gives me really bad flashbacks. <laughs> really bad flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're gonna skip that. One. Uh, Kyle, your favourite opposition in Scotland? Oh, it's hard. To, I, I didn't. I don't think I really played played enough. I'd tell you where I did like playing is I actually really like playing at Arbroath. Um, I don't know what the pitch and that's like these days, but I always remember it being really good and I, I got a few runs there. So yeah, yeah. Um, so I I I am like my, I generally enjoy playing against Aberdeenshire. Obviously, when I played at Stonyhead, it was a massive rivalry. Yeah, and even still now, whenever we play them. I still get that that same feeling like it's like it's my sort of derby almost. Um, not I mean, not more, not more more but yeah, the rivalry is ingrained into my heart now. So whenever we play them, it's always a massive game. Who, ah, was, yeah. forgot, forgot, who was your um, who was your overseas player? I'm not sure whether you said. Did you say one? No, I said it was too hard to pick. Um, so many, obviously. They a lot of them lived with both you, didn't they? Got on really well with Casper. He so he stayed with he came over for two years, and the first year he stayed with us for the last like couple of weeks because I think whoever he came over with had left and he didn't want to stay in the caravan by himself. <laughs> he came down and stayed with us for a couple of weeks, and then when he came back the following year, he ended up just staying with us the, the whole time, and we got on great. He's obviously a bit older than me, but. Um, his mental age was probably about the same as mine was at the time. He'd get up and go to work in the morning and come home in the afternoon and we'd play Brian Lara cricket together and what a game. backyard cricket and stuff like that. So. Yeah, no, that's good. As I say, we've had heaps of brilliant overseas over the years. I couldn't name many ones I didn't like in my either. Anyway. Um, have you guys got a favourite performance for Stonywood? Obviously. Um, You've not got you've not got too many games to pick up, you say, Kyle, but there was a few good good knocks in there and, and bowling back in the day, so you're a bit of a bowler. Well, yeah, that's what I was. I couldn't really remember how I went. You know, I knew I didn't score a whole heap of runs, and uh, at that stage, you know, before I'd even left Stonewood, I'd never even actually scored a hundred, but um, well, I scored a handful of fifties, maybe. Yeah. But the the one that I mean, Sean spoke about the game at four for sure. Uh, at Fort Hill, sorry, where we both got a few runs and we basically played and missed it every every ball going throughout the innings and just laughed at each other. But the one that stands out that I didn't really remember this happening was I got five for 29 against um, John Pellier. Yeah. What's going on there? Must have just been missing straight ones. <laughs> five. You've taken some big scalps in your time, haven't you? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Maybe. Have you been... Have you been egged on to bring that conversation up? Because I'm happy to talk about the wickets I've taken. Um, I, I remember Alan Barron preaching on a, a random Friday night when I was a junior that you got a, a Sri Lankan lad out. Well, I'm not sure. There's a few uh, more, I think. It's quite convenient you said that because Mohammed Ramzan's got caught David Lamb, old KJ Kutzer. Next <laughs> but but he, was, he was an 102, but never mind. <laughs> they all count. They all count, don't they? Yeah, again, I've got the worst memory for remembering games and stuff. I do remember a seven for against someone. St. Modens? Yes. See, this is the... I'm all in there, you yeah, That's That's the brain. You've done some yeah. serious badgering today, haven't you? <laughs> I, I have not done any work today. It's just all been on cricket. Cricket. <laughs> or it's cricket Scotland, honestly. I know everything about your careers. <laughs> Kind of the Bangladesh Premier League, I couldn't believe that. Who I did? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the very first one, I mean, I didn't really play. I, I fielded once and I bowled an over. <laughs> that, that, that was it. I never got a chance to bat and I, and I got injured from, from bowling, which, which, um, which is stupid. <laughs> and another thing that I managed to do there is I went, I went there with, back in those days, I... I refused to play in full spikes so I, I wore sort of half and half spikes i didn't realize how dewy it was going to be under the lights mm -hmm. at, at uh, in dhaka and the ball's been hit to wide long off and i've been charging around and i've sort of slid past it on my arse all the way past it ball's gone 
about six bottles later, yeah. I did the same thing again. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've always wanted to ask you, right? This is just this is just my chance as a, as a cricket cricket fan. Why do you wear an arm guard? Just a I just always I always have done. Um I just used to think it it became like a just a a mental the thing. thing you did, yeah. Uh, it's just a habit. I just need to have it there because I could always feel it against the top of the bat handle. And uh, it used to throw me off. I lost it a couple of occasions through the years and it used to throw me off. Um, but the only times I've ever been hit, there's two really, really contrasting um, occasions here. Playing grade three. I think it was grade three against Ellen at Ellen. And I got hit from a guy probably bowling 60 miles an hour. And it bounced off a length and hit me in the arm guard. First time I'd ever been hit. The next time was one of the opening games of the season at North Ants. I got hit by Tamal Mills on my arm. And I just couldn't feel my arm. <laughs> I just remember Stephen Peters walking down to me with his eyes like this, going, you all right? And I just, I just sort of went, yep. I turned around and walked back. So I, I faced the next few balls with one hand. But I've been doing that for years anyway. Some, similar deck, similar record in that. Ellen... <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, to, uh, yeah, to wanted road. Uh, right, so I've got a quick, a quick story and related little quick fire Q and A for you um, to end, and then we'll go on to what you guys have done after after Stonywood. Unless you've got any any lasting Stonywood stuff that you want to mention, Gouge or anything. No, no, I just remember we used to have a you know we used to have a lot a lot of fun up there. There was always it was always very very social, you know, and it was a it was a great group of people that great group of families really that came together, and ultimately that's what sort of built built the club. Mm -hmm. uh, there were I, I remember being there pushing the wall down when we were sort of opening up the main main pavilion and stuff like that, and you know, <laughs> not that I did anything, I probably couldn't push anything over at that that age because I was I was so scrawny at that age, as David Lamb kindly said a few times, but a few times. Um, <laughs> The the club he didn't even pick you in his best like eighteen. Yeah. Oh well, you know, that's fair enough. Really, like I didn't play that many games to be fair, so yeah. I'm surprised. You know, I, I had a little hint that Mike Lowe might pick me in the team, but there we go. I already had him. I already had him. The the club's a the club's a special place. So, you know, it needs to be needs to be looked after. You know, and mm -hmm. it'd be nice if we can get back and play some of those group with those uh, sort of me down memory lane uh, games, you know, I missed that one last year, unfortunately, but it sounded like it was a great day. Yeah, um, Mr. Mr. Gowdy took it away again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One thing like I would say is when I was younger, I think I spent more time at the club than I did at home. Like, mm -hmm. especially like during the summer holidays at school, you know, me, Martin Reed, Fiona Urker, David Ucker, Fraser Murray, I don't know if Leesky might have been there as well, but we literally, we'd go up there first thing in the morning, we'd pull the net out onto the Astro and we'd just play cricket net all day until it was time to go home at night or then you'd have senior training on, on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. So I think just, yeah. like you say, the family atmosphere of the place and we were there most of our lives growing up. Yeah. Yeah, every summer. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, right, so Gowdy, we'll start with you. Yes. So Elton or Jan, but I'm not going to make you pick them as a cricket player. As a golfing partner, who do you rather have? Elton or Jan? Elton. Elton, confident. Favourite kutzer? I suppose I should say Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Darby Day at Shire or Darby Day at Carlin? Shire. Shire. Wood End Bar. I know, stags are watching this. <laughs> Wood End Bar or the Grange Bar? The Grange Bar. Oh, that's controversial. Gowdy Stand at People's Park. Gowdy Stand at People's Park or the Upper Stand at Grange? The Gowdy Stand. Get Leesky out or get Jan out? Leesky. <laughs> You have a habit of doing that, don't you? Sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> Our brother force. For what? Just, just anyone. I don't know. Who do you, you rather like? Who do you, who do you like more? I don't know. I'm brother for the team. Correct answer. Right, Kyle. Tough one to start with. 
Maybe it's easy actually. I don't know. You put, open the baton, Sean or Stu. Uh, Stuart. Although, although every scorecard I looked at, Stuart pretty much got zero or <laughs> under five. <laughs> He seemed like that. Either got zero, five, or ninety. Yeah. Seems interesting. Better player in their pond, Jan or Gouds? Uh, Gouds. People's Park or Stag Park? People's Park. When the Coke. Sun's... Man, Coke float with Mike Lowe or a pint with Bob Lamb? Uh, oh, I've got to say Mike Lowe. We got to stick together here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Night out in Aberdeen, Newcastle. Picked anyone else? <laughs> I would say, you know what? I'm going to say Aberdeen because every time I'm never, in, I'm hardly ever in Aberdeen. Whenever I go back, it's great fun. <laughs> hit Leesky for six or hit Guides for six. Oh, we could always talk about this, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's some stories, if there's some stories, we might. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, 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 I thought it was a bit longer straight at Stag Park than, than <laughs> it actually is, but... Um, it's certainly long that day. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just happened to get hold of one back over his head that day. I can't remember. We probably didn't win, though, but I just remember. It was back over his head. Room with Leesky or room with Shaky? Uh, Shaky would never open the curtains. I'll tell, Shaky would never open the curtains, so he was basically it was like a sloth in the night. <laughs> Um, Leesky, Leesky, you'll put your washing in and he'll make you a cup of tea. Really? The, only is, the only thing is, he'll be in bed religiously at like whatever the time is 9 pm. So it's like you, can, you, you can't walk around the room, but he's so, so tired from all the energy he's wasted during the day, buzzing about the <laughs> Right, um, that, that's it. That's what I was giving you. Um, yeah, not Yanni won't be happy with that, guys. Yanni will not be happy with that golfing partner. The two of them are playing golf tomorrow morning. Anyway, yeah. At like six in the morning and they did it last Friday and we've obviously got a WhatsApp group between the three of us and I've seen the videos of the tee shots and <laughs> it's safe to say at this moment in time Elton is the better golfer by <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so moving on to you guys leaving Stony with Dice then. So um so we'll start with you guys. Um, was it 16 years old to the young pickers? Uh, I think it was a year. It was, I was 17 um, when I left. I finished school and literally as soon as I finished my last exam, I went down to London to the MCC Young Cricketers, um, which was an unreal experience. Never even thought of it happening at the time to be honest it just it all came around pretty quickly how, how did it come about um i think the season before we played in the under 19s euros down in Oundle, i think it was mm -hmm. um, when dawkins who was the assistant coach of the yc's at the time he was there obviously just having a scout around um and spoke to him at the tournament there and he sort of discussed the the possibility of it happening once I'd finished school, um, which obviously bit, bit his hand off for that opportunity. And yeah, as I say, couldn't, couldn't get down there quick enough as soon as that last exam was finished. Um, I was off back, back down to London. So who, who was all in that um, team then? Because it's all, yeah. all around the world, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys, a few guys from Ireland, Will Porterfield, Kevin O'Brien, uh, Ian Young. From west of Scotland, he was down there as well. All right. Um, Kyle's mate, Giddo, Will Gidman, he was there. He was captain oh. uh, when I went down there. But yeah, no, it's just a brilliant, brilliant experience. Waking up every day and going to Lords as your home ground to train was was pretty special. Yeah. Uh, you get goosebumps just walking in the gates there. I don't know if it's the same for Kyle, but it's a, a special place to play cricket. Yeah. So also, Kyle, you went down about similar age to. To Durham, how, how did that come about in first first memories? Uh, I think first memories was probably the year before I went down, and I, I, it would have been Mike Hendrick who had the link with Jeff Cook down there. So I went down to a they called it the Cricket School of Excellence down there, and we went to Sacriston, uh, Sacriston Community College, I think they called it, and it was just it was quite a 
fast bouncy indoor hall with a leak in the corner and like it wasn't like all that flash but it did the job and I was properly like intimidated when I went in there because you know coming from from Stony Woods and I guess we're all sort of family really and and uh, all of a sudden I rock up a, a group of fairly rough and ready um sort of um Geordies or, or Mackhams or wherever they were coming from in, in that neck of the woods and wow I was it was like proper proper eye opener when I when I turned up there and then I obviously did okay um and then I went back I went back the year after and I played I actually played a trial game against the YCs at High Wycombe guys will know from down there and, and I think Ross Taylor played in that game against me and I got 70 in the first innings and that was still to then one of my highest scores actually they didn't know that I didn't tell them that and uh, Jeff sat me in the minibus and said oh, I'll quite like you to come back next year and I basically flew off to Cape Town about five days later I reckon and, yeah uh, that's the one thing you both played for Cape Town isn't it yeah. What? What? How was that experience playing different? I'll say better wickets, I'm guessing, than the yeah. Scottish ones. Class. What? Well, great club as well. I, I mean, I, I clubs evolve, don't they? So things change, and you know, I know it's still a good club. I'm still linked with a lot of the the sort of slightly older players. They call it the Wombats, the Wombats team, um, and yeah. I, you know what? What I remember there is just a, a good, friendly club, and we went and played, and we were, we were a good team. It was playing good, good cricket over there, uh, and we used to have. I'll bring this up before gals get a chance, but we used to have a, a car called the Hog. So it was a maroon <laughs> Opal Cadet, and you know I left them with it, and I said, "Gals, look, you can." You know, I'm pretty sure my dad said, "Gals, you can use this car if you want. You know, look after it." and then he went and crashed it, didn't he? Yeah. Never, I never got to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> the old man did a good job of fixing it up after I remodelled the front of it. Yeah. <laughs> is, that the, is that the peak link? Uh, is it just a general creature link Cape Town? Great club. Because a few have come from there, haven't they? Yeah, I think, Overseas. I think the link initially, well, my dad um, had a, a good school friend and she had a link with the West Proms Academy, and that's originally how I went over there. And then uh, um, Gouds was just, I guess, a follow-up somehow along that that route. Uh, I'm assuming to get to Cape Town, and then yeah, I think I think you there was I went out because you couldn't go out or something like that. Right. Okay. For some reason you couldn't go out, and I think they were expecting a gun and opening batsman to turn up because I went there, got to the first training session. They were like, right, you put your pads on, you can have a hit, you're opening batsman, aren't you? And I was like, nah, <laughs> not really. At the time, I dabbled in a bit of pinch hitting. Um, but yeah, no, it was a, a great club, um, great bunch of guys there. And yeah, had an absolute ball of a, of a season. <laughs> I must have been intimidated rocking up <laughs> over a mountain. But back to your, you and back to your your link there. You said there was there did happen to be a coincidence of a few people coming over from from that. I guess we all sort of created links from there with Mario and Darren both sort of being on the academy at uh, at Western Province and and Sean Fabe just happened to be a friend of friend of all of ours really, and he just happened to come over from the club and end up in Aberdeen. So. Um, yeah, no, Sean said that he just he just turned up one day. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, um, so, like Kyle, I mean, you've got a pretty illustrious county career. Um, any, any of your favourite knocks or players played with from, from your time at North Ants and Durham? You must have, you must be able to reel off a ridiculous oh. amount of... Um, you you got, you got to get you got to gauge the atmosphere and the environment before you start reeling off names. Sometimes, otherwise, <laughs> you can get a bit stick for it. But <laughs> I, I've been I've been fortunate to play with a, a lot of um, well known well known players, um, and you know we're, I've had some really successful seasons and have some have some really really crappy seasons at the same time. <laughs> like couldn't score a run the whole year and and whatnot, but. Um, you know, playing. I think I said I said it recently in a few podcasts, but pulling on a Scotland shirt's always 
always been sort of the, the pinnacle, you know, it always, it's always meant just it meant a little bit more and a little bit more passion there. But the, you know, playing for Durham North Hans had, had some great times there too. And, um, mm. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to the Scotland stuff then, um, just all started obviously junior stuff and then under, you both went to two under 19 World Cup. So, I mean, that's probably the first big tournament that you're both part of. So what are your memories of, memories of going out to then? Because you must have been 16, 17 when you went to your first one. Yeah, Gals, you yeah, we both went to two, so yeah. and you would have won together, were you? Mm. Yeah, we were in Bangladesh together. Yeah, memories of that one, Gals. <laughs> uh, any, any good ones? Was it was that the one where you got bowled for twenty? Yeah, <laughs> twenty three years old. Like it's Australia. I'll never forget the first game we played in the the World Cup proper was against India in a packed stadium in Dhaka, flattest wicket in the world and our captain thought it'd be a good idea to when he won the toss the bowl. <laughs> yeah I mean that's true I mean there's, there's a little bit behind it but that's true it was, it was literally like playing on the on the A1 or it, <laughs> A1's not even that flat let's go let's go over at M1 and you know we won the toss and the, the chat was around uh, you know, I think we should probably just try and work our way into the tournament. Let, let's have a bowl and settle in theirs and stuff like that. And what did they end up getting? 400 and something. Yeah, no idea. 420 or something like that, I think it was. I remember, I remember probably five or six overs in, they must have been near enough 100 already or something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Is and, that when you went, maybe I should just have had? And, and <laughs> I went to, Gals, did you open the bowl in that day? Yeah, I think I did me and Big Lumbo. Lumbo. And I, what I remember is bringing, I said to Raji for outro, I said, Raj, do you want to, you, know, you can come on next over from, from, from that end. There was no difference in the ends. The ground was completely flat, like a rapid outfield. Raj, do you mind bowling? He said, yeah, cool. I think his first over, every single ball went for four. He was bowling at Shikhar Dawan and, and whoever, Suresh Reina, whoever it was. Yeah, and, and I sort of, sort of, gingerly walked up to him after his last ball had gone for four as well as should we should we just give it another go do you fancy another over you know it's like <laughs> what what else what else can you say you know either you rip him off and you'll probably never recover in that game or you <laughs> give him another one no um so the, the most economical that day uh, with figures like going at seven and over or something like that <laughs> it was madness <laughs> absolute madness it was good to watch though yeah. The noise is ridiculous as well there, like, for watching a game, like, just how much passion that the Bangladeshi people have for the, the cricket, they just absolutely love it. I mean, it wasn't the Bangladesh playing, but... Gals, um. do, do, do you remember, there's two things I remember from that tour. Uh, well, there's three. One, the lift never stopped at the right level, so you either had to take a step out or jump out the lift <laughs> in the hotel. The other... The other well, and they're all coming back quickly actually the other was we're all standing at a lift and the porter had a whole tray full of of uh, room service and icky went to try and like put something in his pocket and the guy panicked and threw all the food all over ever in the hallway <laughs> and us being young lads just legged it <laughs> like a bunch of naughty schoolboys. Um, the, the start of many many pranks that happened on tour there was there was there was nothing to do there. Well, like we weren't really allowed out of the hotel. There was guards either end of the corridor. There we used to sit playing cards and look out the window, just watching for crashes out the window. <laughs> that many, um, and um, we played a warm up game in a uh, a guard. Willie Morton tapped me on the on the shoulder. He just went, "Can look at that?" There was a an army guard sleeping on the head of his rifle like this. <laughs> Always remember that. Always. So some, some amazing, yeah, some good memories. Um, moving on with the Scotland stuff. Uh, well, the Scotland debut. Gouds, remember your Scotland debut? Much of it. How it came about? Yeah, no. you were 16, 17. I mean, yeah, I was 16. It's one, one game I do obviously remember, like it was yesterday. Um, I got called up during. We were playing a cup game at Stonywood against. Clydesdale, I think it was at the time, um, and like I've obviously had, had no idea what was going on, but there was obviously phone calls to the club with people saying, "Oh, they want Gordon to fly down to London to play against Middlesex 
Scotland tomorrow, which again, I was just like, what, what is going on here? So literally, as soon as I stepped off the pitch um, after that game, I don't even think the game had finished. I think I, I got sent up the order to sort of get in and get out so I could go and catch a flight down to London. Um, it's quite convenient. Yeah. You couldn't have a more convenient club to, to fly down to London, could you? Just jump out there, just hop over. Hold the fence and throw my bag in the plane, that was it. Um, <laughs> but no, nah, it was, yeah, it was a special, special day. As Kyle says, there's nothing better than pulling the Scotland shirt on. It um, doesn't matter if it's your first game or, your, or the last game you do. It's, it's a special feeling. But I do remember that game we were getting hammered I think we I don't know if we we must have bowled first and I was pretty nervous and my first ball was bowling at Jamie Dalrymple I'll never forget this either first ball for Scotland ran in bowled it decent length Jamie Dalrymple drove it straight to cover and Floyd Reefer was the pro for Scotland at the time shelled it um, so it could have been a fairy tale start um, to my Scotland career and I think it just showed the, the step up in level from what we were used to the very next ball I got smacked straight back over my head for six um, yeah, and then when we were we went out to bat and they had Nanty Hayward playing for them at the time he was bowling absolute thunderbolts but he had no idea where it was going um, and we'd lost heaps of wickets our other overseas player was Guy Sriram, a little mm. guy from India. He was a, a good player, um, and I'd gone out to bat with him at the other end. And Nanti Hayward was bowling at Sriram, and the first ball I saw from the non-striker's end was Hayward ran and bounced Sriram and smashed him on the glove. And Sriram just walked down to me and he was like, I'm done, and walked off. So here's me, 16 years old, making my Scotland debut, watching this, like, <laughs> watching this batter, who is supposed to be the pro, get smashed in the glove and just walk off. So I'm absolutely breaking did he it. Break it. Did he break a finger? Yeah, I think he broke his finger. Oh, um, so yeah, but eventually I went down the striker's end, saw the, f the first ball Hayward ball to me, did not see it at all. Um, so I don't know if it's brave or stupid. I thought to myself, right, I'm going to run down the wicket to him because if it's short, I've got no chance. So I'm going to try and make it full. <laughs> so I did that, and I think I got like three runs or something like that. But yeah, it was a it was an interesting debut. An eventful debut. Kyle, remember your debut? Yeah, I came up. I was just a. I think I was just a. I played a game or two for Durham Seconds, maybe. I can't, I can't remember exactly, but we played. Pakistan at West of Scotland and I was never been so relieved to see that Shaw Bakhtar's name wasn't on the team sheet so, <laughs> so they still had Darren Sammy and Umar Gull and, and and all these guys but uh yeah it was it was a it was a good day I, I'm not sure whether I got teams maybe or but I ran about like a Trojan when I could dive in field but those days yeah. are those days are uh, disappearing very quickly. So how did it work then with obviously being at a county and coming back or like, were you always on the radar of Scotland or did you miss some games to play county there? Uh, I missed I missed both ways, to be honest. It was, ways, never yeah. easy. it was never easy, to be honest. Gals might will probably, uh, you know, he'll probably say something similar possibly, but I, I remember walking around in the upstairs hallway at Durham not knowing what to do because Durham wanted me to play and Scotland wanted me to play and I was like, what, what, what should I do? And, yeah. and whatever decision I made was upsetting someone else. So I just, yeah. it was, it got to a stage that I just, someone just please make the decision for me so I don't have to worry about that at the time. So it was, it was some pretty awkward times actually. Yeah, that's tricky, yeah. Pretty awkward yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Um, so have you got any favourite Scotland games? I mean... I think I could answer yours for you, Kyle, but maybe you're going to surprise me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you can't really see um, see past past the England one. You know, that's pretty 
what, what an amazing day, you know. It was good. It was good for everyone. It wasn't just good for us. It was good for the, the everyone watching and and the fact that it's come up in highlights on TV. The amount of clips actually I've seen of of games that Scotland have played in, which is uh, which has shown that we've actually played some exciting games, some good games of yeah. cricket on the on the world stage, and we haven't always been at the the winning end of them. But uh, yeah, that England game, you know, is pretty much up there. And the other one. Probably uh, the World Cup game against Bangladesh, where I got 150. Um, that was that was a great that was a great day. Great couple of days leading up to it. Good couple of days after it. It was just a good good event. And actually, it was the first first time. I'm pretty sure it was the first time my mom and dad had ever seen me score 100 live. So oh, wow, yeah. that t- that tells you maybe my conversion rate. So it was great. <laughs> <laughs> That was a nice tournament, wasn't it? That 2015 World Cup. It's such a shame that you obviously didn't get a chance to, to do it again in 2019. But I mean, you scored a lot of runs in 2015 as well, did you? In that World Cup. Yeah, it was good. It was a great tournament. New Zealand's a beautiful country. You wanna, so it's always going to be. You've been there, Gals, as well, haven't you? Like, and yeah. it's one of the best, best countries to go to go to and tour. Hey, Jimmy Anderson for the that day. I remember watching that at one, one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that was a that was an anti skill though. I tried to hit him over the top and it went through the covers, but just <laughs> everyone seems to think I did it on purpose. He was running in because we, me, myself, and Gouda's mate Jimmy had had a had a disagreement in the first game of the season at Northamptonshire. He opened the, he opened opened the bowling. I was opening the batting. Green pitch at Northants. He was like number one, two, or three, or whatever he was in the world. Brand new ball. And and I'm playing and missing at everything. It's like, and he's 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 spraying me. I'm like, seriously, like, do you do you think I'm gonna ever lay a bat or or hit any of these? So, so what happens? I go and nick one, and uh, Josh Butler just straight into the mitts, just drops it. So Anderson absolutely loses the plot. Uh, and then you know I probably nicked off probably 10, 15, 15 runs later. Uh, but the same thing happened again about two weeks after that because we played England in Aberdeen and I nicked Jimmy Anderson and straight into Butler's gloves, dropped it. So oh. I it happened twice. Uh, and then when we got, you know, he's given me a fair few sprays and stuff like that. And like, he's, he's not, he's not my, my biggest fan uh, for whatever reason. And he actually shoulder barged me that game at Northlands, which I sort of held a little bit of a grudge to him about. It was, but um, I'm sure he's a nice enough guy. But then we played that game in Christchurch, and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to take it to him here. And I was like, I'm going to whack him back over his head if he pitches it up and sliced it through the covers, and everyone thought it was a good. Sliced through the covers, and everyone talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gouds, any favourite Scotland games performances? Um, I think the obvious one, the my individual performance, would be the five for a two against Australia mm-hmm. at the Grange in 2009. Um, was the highlight of my individual career, but I think a sort of a personal, well, a, a team highlight for me was when we beat um, Bangladesh in the T20. It was the first time we beat um, a full nation, um, which was was pretty special. Um, Barrow had a Richie Barrington had a f- unbelievable knock, um, and yeah, just it was a, a great day and an even better night. <laughs> how about the 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 qualifier when Cloudy and them, that one in New Zealand, Cloudy and them. Um, the qualifier for the 2015 one? Yeah, to qualify. Leesky was there, wasn't he? Yeah, those boys. Yeah, I believe when we beat. Yeah, it was at Kenya. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that, that, was, that was a hell of a night. And... <laughs> that was indeed. <laughs> we, yeah. We, 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 we actually managed to get. There was a tire when we played at Queenstown. Do you remember this? There was a tire that kept the door open to our to the away dressing room, and myself, Drummo, and and Icky weren't playing, I think, and we decided to put it in the fielding kit bag. So the tire made it all the way from Queenstown all the way back to Christchurch, and I always remember Collie was like, "Bloody hell, this bag's heavy. I don't remember it being this heavy in the way here." He had a big tractor tire this big in the in the bottom of his bag the whole way back to Christ to Christchurch. 
What was the what was the what was the biggest night out then after our game? What game? What win? Would it have been the England one or the? No, I think I think the um, the one where we qualified there in in Christchurch that was a, it. Was huge. Uh, there, there, such a long tournament as well, and there's so many ups and downs. I think, and then that game at the end was was pretty tight. I think just the fear, the fact we qualified. We just won. yeah, it was all on the line, wasn't it? That if we hadn't beaten them that day, everyone would have lost their contracts at Scotland. It was all, literally. Is it? Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Shows what cricket was like for us, wasn't and it? It was literally your job at, on the line. And there, there happened to be a, a tab, didn't there? A tab got put on at this one bar in Christchurch, and an hour later, the tab was finished. They were like, the guys are just ordering pizzas and bottles of wine, and like it just got, it just got messy, didn't it? it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was some night. But um, yeah, the old team photo at nine o'clock the next morning wasn't <laughs> wasn't looking too sharp. <laughs> on the same on the same line, then, uh, what's both your favourite tours? Favorite our favourite place to go to, or favourite place you've been in Scotland? Um, for like venue or for what happened? Obviously, like the New Zealand thing. Gaz, did you come to the West Indies? Did we go to the West Indies together or not? Yeah, was that like the pre-World Cup tour? Yeah, the pre-World Cup tour. That, that, was, was, a good one. that was an eventful tour for me. I broke my finger after the first week <laughs> um, in the nets. And I broke it so that like the bone had come out. So I had like a stitches in it and a bandage and whatever. So I spent the last, the last week of that tour pretty much just in the swimming pool with my hand sticking up and in bars at night. <laughs> we had, not, bad, not a bad place to go, is it? We, we, turned up, we turned up there on a pre-World Cup tour. And the, like, the World Cup was, what, six months later or something like that? But think, we went there. I think it was a year. I think the thing we to do was to go to the Caribbean to experience like the climate and the pitches and what, what they would be like. A year out from the the World Cup, um, That's right, I, think yeah. the fact, I think the fact the tour was sponsored by Coxpur Rum probably set the tone. Um, as soon as you got off the bus at the time, I remember we got those bags from Coxpur with a bottle of rum and a bottle of rum punch each. Um, as as yeah, we walked through set, the doors, set the scene the hotel, as we walked through the doors, didn't we? Here you go, each. Oh, what's in here? <laughs> you hear the, the bag <laughs> clinking, but. Um, you know, I w South Africa is always a good tour. We've always had good times, a good tour. We've had a number of good tours, actually, like myself and Gouds room together a bit. And, you know, there's always pranks and whatnot going on. And, um, yeah, it was always good fun. It is, like, as, as good as it sounds, obviously, being away to these, like, stunning places, it is. It can get pretty long and, and arduous. So I do think you need a bit of fun. Um, yeah. June was, was, yeah. Was, the pranks definitely help. Yeah. Was it, the amount of times Juddy got hammered with the pranks was just the, the it'd be the wake up calls or or the you'd put a little bit of Tabasco sauce around the top of his glass, wouldn't we? Mm. You and Barrington were the worst. <laughs> Tabasco sauce around the tip of the glass and he's eating a salad and he's going, Oh, there's a bit on this and he's taking a drink <laughs> out of the red wine. Ah, it's nice. Yeah, it's a bit hot, and then what? What you shout? You just shout out, Barrington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like he thought it was the food, so the more he, the hotter it got, the more he would drink. But he didn't realise that it was the drink that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got his, his fair share of doing the old Juddy. Um, best Scotland player played with. That's an easy one. It's Gouds, isn't it? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I think it's safe to say for me, it's as like the best Scottish player I've played with is definitely Kyle. Um, yeah. His weight run shows that, and he's an alright bloke as well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, who would you go for? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, loads of loads of good players. Um, but I think one just it's slightly different because he was an overseas. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Rahul Dravid because 
Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to play a couple of games with him, and he did he did barbecue me one day, which I was accepting of because <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't run him out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was he was just amazing actually, and and the way it could, currently actually we both sit in the same committee at the ICC, so I do I do happen to to bump into him every now and then. Which tell is, him tell him about the barbecue. Yeah, no, I never brought that one up, but I will. I'm building up to it, so. <laughs> I'll get to it. Uh, this is question you want maybe um, best Scottish player who never to get a cap. So that's probably a tricky one. Um, I think I know Lamy's name's been mentioned a number of times, and he's certainly he was certainly unlucky. Like he was a he was a fine player. Like, I remember most of my years at Stonywood as actually watching. Growing up, for some reason, I remember that clearer than I do actually well, yeah. playing. Mm-hmm. Lamy, Lamy's got to have been, got to have been unlucky there to to never get get capped. But I know things were different back then. Yeah. Uh, again, I think um, I would obviously second that. From well, I was obviously a lot younger then, but from just remembering he was always the one at Stonewood who was scoring runs and doing it in the National League sort of week in, week out. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit surprising that he he never got a cap. Yeah. I thought you were going to say one of your, your stag park buddies then, but they've all been capped, haven't they? Throw them out, down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm sure I have no one from Granger's Watch and they have no idea who I am, so that'll be all right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> anyway, right, so... Um, Favourite person to room with in, in the Scotland team? Leesky? Energy? It, it, it depends. It depends because Leesky is good. Leesky is very good sometimes. Like, For like oh, getting you... Oh, mate, you just... All of a sudden there'll be a cup of tea by the side or a coffee or whatever. And he's doing his... He always does his stuff religiously, like his, his laundry and things like that. And I just say, oh, this is what I've got. And he does it and throws it in and takes it away. Like he's, a, he's an absolute beauty for that, that kind of stuff. Some boy. Um, oh, look, I've had some, look, I've never, I, in many ways, actually, I've always probably preferred rooming with people than not rooming with people. Cause I don't like the social side of it, you know? So, um, Gouds is always good to room with. Um, we probably got up to a bit too much mischief to be honest, but then, then he moved on to Barrow, didn't he? Yeah, some epic games of FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think everyone in Scottish Craig knows that me and Barrow roomed together and were like inseparable at times. Um, so yeah, I definitely go with Barrow. Yeah. Uh, right, so I was thinking end with a, a little Q&A just about your general cricket. So um, you can talk about getting Sire Card out, Kyle. Uh, so we could, well, I held that back early. I nearly let it. Back, back early, so we'll get out here so Alan Barron can can uh, like that. So, um, favorite tournament played in for any anyone, Kyle? You've obviously played in all yeah. the T Twenty franchises all over the world. Uh, it's got to still be two thousand fifteen World Cup. World yeah, Cup. just for the whole yeah the whole picture of it. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, again, I wasn't lucky enough to get to play in any World Cups for Scotland, which is my one of my only regrets, really. Um, so I think the closest I came was obviously the the two under ninety World Cups I played in um, were were pretty special. Biggest scalp. I'll let you go first because I've been <laughs> just you can roll back the memories <laughs> with the ball pitch. <laughs> I forgot you out, have I? <laughs> you probably have. You yeah. probably have. Um, no, I think uh, the first one that springs to mind was getting Michael Clark out um, in that game against Australia at Grange. The Pfeiffer. Yeah, clean bowled him, um, which is, was pretty good. It was a slow ball and he did try to sweep me, but... <laughs> you, 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 could, you could have just said pitch and middle hit up top of off. <laughs> I, t- I tell people that I, I read his mind. I knew he was going to try something, so that's why I bowled the slow ball. So I don't him like a kid. Is that the same with Sarah Carter? He was going to do roll the hands over it. Right? Yeah, I just I just did him with lack of. I reckon <laughs> uh, he he was he was literally batting in a sort of it was a first class game, but a practice game 
against Northampton. The fact that I was bowling is embarrassing anyway, and I was bowling first change in a first class game. And I bowled, I tried to bowl length, 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 anti skill, or just dragged one down short, just a long hop, and he just top edged it down to one of Gowda's mate, Chad Barrett, on the boundary, who caught it. Um, and I, I walked past him and I apologised because I knew he was just trying to get some practice. That makes sense. Now, far as stand up now. Oh, another wicket, actually. A bit, couple of big wickets, now that I remember it. Well, the biggest wicket you've ever taken that I've seen is, I don't know if you were going to say this one, but that wicket you took in Kenya on the last <laughs> day, the hottest day in the history of planet. It was just unreal. We'd been toiling for the whole day to try and get this wicket. And old Barry Block just kept blocking them out, blocking them out. And every bowler had tried, failed, and I don't know, it was just peeling out to a draw, and then somebody decided to throw the ball to Costa. <laughs> and it was like, it's like 40 it, degrees, wasn't it? It was absolutely roasting. His little skinny run up, his little slingy action, he snuck this little in swinging New Yorker, crept under the bat, and oh. It was the biggest sigh of relief I think I've ever had on the cricket field of my life. <laughs> Kyle's celebration after it was ridiculous. Uh-huh. He's gone running off to the side and he went to give it the old Klinsman. I don't think he actually did not. The, the I old started rabbit. taking my shirt off for some reason. I have no idea why I did. It was, if, if, you could, if you could try and picture it was almost almost like an Imran Tahir celebration like we hadn't taken a wicket all day and I, as soon as I bowled him I didn't mean to bowl it there either I, I completely anti-skilled a Yorker I just tried to bowl a length ball and then I went off and the whole team started chasing me it was that was um but I mean I might I might ask this person to come and watch this one but one of my one of my best wickets ever was when we were playing regional cricket with regulation balls so the rego balls aren't the top of the range kookaburras, so they've got a, a, a bigger seam, a thin seam all the way around it. And I just ran up and I bowled this wobble seam ball, nipped in and hit the top of middle stump, Richie Barrington. Off, off he goes. I started charging around the field again that day. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get him to watch this just so I remind him, because I, I, Matthew Parker actually took a Snapchat of that ball and I was asking him for it yesterday. I couldn't <laughs> get it. No, he hasn't. I, I can see it. You know, you can look back in your WhatsApp hmm. and the pictures, and I've sent it to Barrow three times over the years. <laughs> I've sent it to him three times, but I don't have it on my phone, so it doesn't remember it, but you can see the outline of, the, of it, so I'm going to have to look for it. <laughs> uh, Favourite ground around the world to play at? Um, uh, Lord, Lords is pretty good, obviously, but... I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, I'll enjoy Grange for because the pitches are good. But Nelson, most Nelson, amazing ground. I absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. Well, Lords as well is just for the history and and what it means to cricket is is quality. But for me, it's e- either between Newlands and Cape Town or. Um, the Queenstown pitch, the ground mm. Queenstown is just like the scenery there is just unbelievable. It's not much to the ground; it's just you know an open, open field and with a grass bank all the way around. But the mountains um, in the background are pretty special. Is that an upstate airport, like like uh, like Stonehenge? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, did 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 any of you see the? Uh, it came up on like it would have been ESPN Twitter or. Cricket for Twitter or something like that a couple of years ago, and it was the most stunning grounds in the world, and it had like it had Queenstown and it had Cape Town and it had a few. One ground popped up in Aberdeen. Guess which one it was? Stunning days. No, no. It was it was the beachfront ground at, at <laughs> the links. The links. So it's kind of <laughs> taken a photo from the top, and the grass must have just been cut. And the one day the sun was out in Aberdeen. And that ground came up in one of the <laughs> one of the best <laughs> grounds in the world somehow. <laughs> it looked to no, be fair, it looked amazing on must have had a hell of a filter on it, but it looked actually, yeah, yeah, it looked decent from picture when you're up at the moment. 
<laughs> no, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you compared to the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best player batted with. Um, you go, Gals. You got one. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to see you again, but I tried to talk him through his first. With the was it ODI or T20I? One of them, fifty, and he didn't do it, did he? No, I got forty-seven. That the old scoop game. <laughs> what did I? What did I say? I said to him, Gals, just, just. <laughs> get a couple of ones or twos here. Just hit it hard. Get a couple of ones or twos, and he goes, "All right, all right." And he walked back and set it straight up in the sky or something. <laughs> right. Um, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Shivnarine Chanderpaul when he was in his at his best, when he was number one in the world. I remember I played one of my first, uh, what they call it, Yorkshire Bank Forties or whatever they called. It, I can't remember, and. We played at Surrey again uh, against Surrey, and Harbhajan Singh was bowling, and I was like, just dooring it basically, trying not to get out. And Chanderbol comes down to me and just he said something in his like, in his accent. He just says, "Just just go like this, and then just knock it there, and just go." And I just sort of looked at him and nodded and went, "Yeah, well, whatever." And and just I was just getting off off strike from inside edges and stuff like that. And yeah, he was. We played the championship, we'd won the championship, we played at Worcester and we were batting to declare, but none of, none of us wanted to declare because we'd been out till five o'clock in the morning on the, on, the, on the third night. And we didn't want to declare to have a, have a bowl because we'd already won the championship by this point. So Chanderpaul was batting and he was intentionally not getting to 150. He was intentionally using his thigh pad and knocking it down to, to fine leg so he wouldn't get to 150 so they'd declare. And then Mark Davies said to him, uh, Shiv, they're, they're waving like mad from the balcony at uh, Worcester. I think they want us to declare. And Shiv said to him, Devo, do you, uh, do you want to bowl? Dave was like, no. He says, well, stop looking at the balcony then. And they carried on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not say to me, Kyle, as well, that he used to like just sit and sleep, even though he was next in. And he'd have to like, give him a nudge and be like, Shiv, you're in. Yeah, he, said, he used to say he was resting his brain. He was next in, he's sitting back in his chair, sleep with his two, what were they, Muller or whatever, those two things. Oh, yeah, he did that to you. Yeah, he and then you walk in. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, best player that you've hit for six? No, we haven't got Gouds as best player yet. What was, what was yours? Did I say you? Did I not uh, shake his head? No, nah, he's not allowed to say me. Yes, say <laughs> was it Batter? Yeah, you did say Batter. Yeah, Batter. Yeah. Yeah. Must have had someone at Middlesex. No, I played in twos all the time. So. William Portfield? Pretty. <laughs> no, I guess I played um, at the time uh, your mate Morgs was at Middlesex when I was there and you played in the twos together. That's decent. Yeah. 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 Only question yeah. I have for a hundred and sixes. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, yeah. Uh, best player fit for six. Um, I think Yanni's told me about this one, guys. I might bring it up. Best player you fit for six over the Sedexo building at Manfield. Oh, Danny V. In your pocket. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah, again, absolute blind squirrel that day. Just charged him. I just charged him the wicket, and I was absolutely nowhere near it. He'd done me all ends up. And I was like, that far down the wicket, I was like, I might as well just swing as hard as I can here. And connected with it, and it yeah, launched it onto the roof of the pavilion. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard about that, Gals. I wasn't there that day, but I've heard it was a, it was a monster. Yeah, it was. Gals used to whack sixes for fun. And then he would get out every time he got going. Still does, honestly. Every time he comes up to people's park. I mean, he doesn't get out anymore, and that's the difference. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Sure. Matured. I mean, my... I'm in my prime, like you, Costa. That's it. <laughs> um, um, what do, who, who, what's the best six you ever hit in, Colonel? You must have hit some ridiculous players for six. Probably, probably my favourite six. One of my favourites. My favourite six was um, that game at Lords, and it and it wasn't against Shane Warren because everyone thinks it was against Shane Warren, but I didn't. I miscued him over his head for a couple of bounces roll onto the boundary rope four. Um, 
but I hit Sean Irvin in that game. I flicked him off my legs and it went to the top tier at Lords, which was which was pretty cool. So that was that was a good day. But other than that, the the next in the pecking order was definitely when I hit Gals for six over his head at um, <laughs> at Stag Park. <laughs> Okay, so uh, last question, then we'll wrap things up. Um, funniest ever teammate that you've played with? Um, I think for me, I would say uh, Neil McCallum. Obviously, played with him in Scotland stuff, um, and then was lucky to. To play with him the last couple of years before he retired at Grange, and he's just an absolute clown. Um, <laughs> always been no good. Um, just a, a great bloke, a funny, funny man. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was going to be. He was going to be mine as well. There, uh, he's. He's just comedy gold all the time. Always um, had a massive toilet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Funny as, and enjoy doing the odd wristwatch every now and then. Um, getting him something. His puppet shows were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was cool, man. He did a, I don't know if I should say this, but I will. He did a, <laughs> he did a bulldog, naked bulldog, <laughs> running through the corridor and all fours in Dubai of all places. <laughs> <laughs> Which got a wee bit. <laughs> Nearly ended up getting locked up, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was. Okay, um, the the last thing we'll say then is um, a bit of a bit of advice if there's not for any junior budding junior cricketers watching. What is the best piece of cricket advice that anyone's ever given to you, and who said it? Oh, best piece that someone said to to me. Just something like stuck with you, or. The, the, I would say the the advice around balance from from Paddy Maroney is something that's always stuck with me, always. Um, and I said I'd maybe touch on it later. So, so to get a little bit technical, because normally I don't get technical. I'm I'm the least technical player when it comes to talking cricket these days. But the one thing about balance and trying to hit the ball in the leg side, as everyone always talks about, pointing your foot down the pitch. So your front foot, you t you open it up and you point it down the pitch. Well. For me, trying to stay balanced and playing the ball on the leg side is keep a bit of a, what Paddy used to call it, is a natural angle. So your foot, rather than it pointing directly down the pitch, because you don't actually have any balance when you do that, you point it more towards mid-off or potentially extra cover, and it just gives you a little bit more balance when you're playing the leg side. That's, that's one technical thing that Paddy told me that's always stuck with me. So there we go, Paddy, I've said it. <laughs> he did hit that last week, yeah. <laughs> he gave you a few shout-outs actually last week, which is pretty Gouge? I think for me it's just always been about keeping it simple. When you try and complicate things, then it just it never it never ever works. Um, so just keep things as simple as possible. Be a bat and bowl and you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple game to play if you do it almost instinctively without like thinking too much about things. Yeah, simple game made difficult, isn't it? Mm. Um, okay, that ends nicely. So lastly, I always like to end on this. I've, I've become a bit of an agent for the, the Legends team. Um, we might mention earlier the Legends game. So obviously if everything's, everything's well by September, we'll hopefully have a, another edition of the Legends game or maybe a few Legends teams so we can get a, a T20. Will you be back, Gouge, after your performance last year? Absolutely. Yeah. Kyle? Kyle? Yeah, I'll be. If you're not kind of running across Europe or something, will you be? I was, I was okay. desperate, desperate to be there last time. I was gutted that it, I couldn't, couldn't make up there. So we need to get, we need to get four Kutzers in the in the team this year. We only had one last year, Stu, and he, uh, he didn't didn't get too many. So we need... well, well, that's typical Stuart, isn't it? I mean, the, we, uh, I did play a six-a-side competition years and years ago, and it was at Gord, Gordonston, no, G Gordonian, sorry. And we had myself, Sean Stewart, uh, my dad, uh, Grant Dugmore, and uh, I think my dad's brother, um, Chris, played. So there was there was six of us, six of us in the team that day. And I said it was seven aside tournament, but I can't remember who the other person was now. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, that'll be that'll be good. Also, the last one ended in a good end. So same again. Hopefully. Yeah. No. Uh, thanks, you and appreciate yeah, that. So, um, yeah. I mean, thanks for coming on and sharing your stories, guys. Um, sure, that'll be another good one to listen to. And uh, we've got two female internationals next week as Fiona Penny now, not Urquhart and Ilsa Lister on. So thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Thank you.